Hi, this is Manos Burlakis, presenting case number two of the second edition of the Manual of CTO Interventions. This is a case of a patient who presented with a CTO of the left anterior descending artery. He had a flash occlusion of the proximal LAD with an ambiguous proximal cap right next to the takeoff of a Ramos branch and a large circumflex that did not have significant disease. A picture from the right coronary artery demonstrated uh, no significant stenosis. However, there was no feeling of the LAD either through injections of the right coronary artery or during injections of the LAD, which creates the, the question about how the LAD is feeling since even if it's occluded, some collateral flow to that segment is anticipated. However, when we with, withdrew the catheter in the right coronary artery slightly and performed again an injection, there was no feeling of this conus branch that was applying the LAD. This is essentially a Vucent's collateral that goes from a conus branch all the way to the LAD. And this is another example of that, proximal LAD collateral coursing over the RV and then supplying the left anterior descending artery. This is a good collateral to know because it originates uh, proximal in the right coronary artery or can even originate separately from the aorta and sometimes it may not be visualized during right coronary injections as was the case in our patient. We now performed a dual injection during attempts to recanalize this lesion, have better feeling given the larger size of the guide catheters and now we can see the anticipated course of the LAD, although the proximal cap, cap does remain blunt, making it a little harder to enter into the occlusion. And here is the dual injection in the caudal view, demonstrating a potential course of the vessel, but still there is no nub and there is uh, ambiguity in the proximal cap. We performed intravascular ultrasound to define the proximal cap and then we attempted guide wire escalation using a Gaia second and third. However, the wire is clearly not in the vessel structure and is not dancing with the vessel. However, we're then able to create a dissection in the ostium of the proximal right coronary artery and then by doing that, advance a knuckled guide wire into the proximal right coronary, uh, in the proximal LAD. This is an example of a technique called scratch and go, in which case when there's proximal cap ambiguity, by creating a little dissection proximal to the occlusion can help track the vessel and advance uh, past the occlusion. And this is confirmed in another angiographic projection showing that the loop that we have is indeed moving in sync with the course of the left anterior descending artery. After doing that, we try to re-enter using a stingray system See the stingray wire exiting from uh, the side ports of the stingray in between the two markers. And then by doing the stick and swap technique with the stingray wire followed by a pilot 200, we're able to advance the guide wire into the anticipated course of the LAD. However, the problem here is to the dissection, the undergrade flow has now ceased. However, we're able to advance the wire into various branches and we're fairly confident that the wire was in the vessel. Therefore, after predilatation, we did confirm that we were indeed into the distal left anterior descending artery. After implantation of two stents, there was a nice final geographic result with TM3 flow into the LAD and the patient had an event for recovery. This case highlights uh, several factors regarding lesions with an ambiguous proximal cap. The first thing is that um, an LAD can be occluded and can be filling from collaterals from the proximal right through a fusion using collateral or through the conus branch and performing less selective injections of the right coronary artery may help identify those branches and clarify the course of the LAD. Another important fact is the use of the scratch and go technique when undergrade wire escalation is unsuccessful in cases of ambiguous proximal cap it may be safer to create a dissection proximally in the vessel followed by knuckle formation and crossing the lesion in the subintimal space following by distal re-entry. And of course, when subintimal tissue is uh, entered, then re-entry is best achieved using a dedicated system such as the Stingray system to allow re-entry as proximal as possible to the distal cap 
and uh, avoiding the creation of extensive dissection planes. One word of concern when dissection is caused, it may be worthwhile having a wire for safety reasons in the vessel that's originating close to the dissection plane. For example, in this case, who could have had a guide wire into the circumflex in case the dissection happened in the left main and propagated into the circumflex. Thank you very much.